In this video, we're going to focus on rectangles. We're going to talk about their properties and how to solve problems associated with them. Now, a rectangle is a quadrilateral, and a quadrilateral is a four-sided polygon. Now, rectangles are also a special type of quadrilateral known as parallelograms. So let's say if we have this rectangle, rectangle A, B, C, D. Like a parallelogram, opposite sides are parallel. So BC is parallel to AD. And you could write it this way. In addition to that, we could say that AB is parallel to DC. Now, what else do we know about rectangles? Just like a parallelogram, opposite sides are congruent. So BC and AD, they're congruent. So that means that AB and DC are also congruent. Now, all angles are right angles. They're all equal to 90 degrees. So angle A, angle B, angle C, angle D, they equal 90. Now the next thing you need to know are the diagonals. The diagonals are congruent to each other. So diagonal AC is congruent to diagonal BD. Now also, the diagonals bisect each other. So what that means is that AE is congruent to EC and BE is congruent to ED. So we can write it like this. AE and EC are congruent and BE is congruent to ED, which makes E the midpoint of AC and E is also the midpoint of BD. So those are some basic properties of rectangles. Now some formulas that you may want to keep in mind are these. Let's say this is the length and the width of the rectangle. The area is length times width. The perimeter is the sum of all four sides, so it's 2L plus 2W. And if you wish to calculate the length of the diagonal, you could use the Pythagorean theorem. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. In this case, D squared is L squared plus W squared. So you can use that to calculate the length of the diagonal. Now let's work on some example problems. Our goal is to determine the measure of segment BD. And we're given AE and EC. So how can we do so? Well, we know that the diagonals bisect each other. So E is the midpoint of AC, which means that AE and EC, they're equal to each other. So if we set them equal to each other, we could say that x squared plus 2 is equal to 3x plus 6. So I'm going to take everything from the right side and move it to the left side. So it's going to be x squared minus 3x plus 2 minus 6. Now 2 minus 6 is negative 4. And so we have a trinomial where the leading coefficient is 1. And we need to factor it in order to solve the quadratic equation. So what two numbers multiply to the constant term negative 4, but add up to the middle coefficient negative 3? This is going to be negative 4 and positive 1. Negative 4 plus 1 adds up to negative 3, and negative 4 times 1 is still negative 4. So to factor it, it's going to be x minus 4 times x plus 1. So now what we need to do is we need to set each factor equal to 0. So x minus 4 is equal to 0, and x plus 1 is equal to 0. So x has to equal 4 and negative 1. Now let's keep in mind that AE is x squared plus 2. Because x is squared, we won't get a negative result for AE for using either of these two answers. Now for EC, x is, I mean, EC is 3x plus 6. So if we plug in negative 1, 
it will still give us a positive result. So x can be both answers. Now if x is equal to 4, ae is going to be 4 squared plus 2, which is 4 squared is 16, 16 plus 2 is 18. And 3 times 4 plus 6, that's 12 plus 6, that's also 18. So AE and EC potentially are both 18, which means AC, the sum of AE and EC, that's going to be 18 plus 18, which is 36. And the diagonals of a rectangle are congruent, which means that AC and BD, they're the same. So this diagonal is congruent to that one which means BD is 36. So that's one answer for BD, which is what we're looking for. Now to find the other answer, let's use a different X value. So let's start with AE. AE is still X squared plus two. So let's replace x with negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1, so it's 1 plus 2, which gives us 3. And ec should give us the same result. It's 3x plus 6, so that's going to be 3 times negative 1 plus 6, which is negative 3 plus 6, and so that's 3 as well. Now, ac, well, first let's start with bd. bd is equal to ac. And AC is the sum of AE plus EC. So that's going to be 3 plus 3, which is 6. So we have two potential answers for BD. It could equal 36 or 6 in this problem, based on the expressions of AE and EC. Number 2. Rectangle ABCD has an area of 40 and a perimeter of 26. What is the length of segment AE? So for those of you who want to try this problem, feel free to pause the video and work it out. So how can we use the area and the perimeter of this rectangle in order to determine the measure of AE? So let's call this X. How can we determine the value of X? What do you recommend that we do? Well, let's say that AD is the length, and DC is the width. AC is the length of the diagonal. We said that the diagonal D is equal to, well, D squared is going to be L squared plus W squared. Now, if we could find D, which is the length of AC, AE is half of that. So AE is simply one half of AC, and AC is basically the diagonal. So if we can calculate D, we can easily find AE. And in order to find D, we need to determine the length and the width of the rectangle. So how can we do that? How can we determine the length and the width given the area and the perimeter? Well, we need to write a system of equations. The area is the length times the width, and the perimeter is 2L plus 2W. So we could say that 40, which is the area, is LW, and the perimeter is 26, that's equal to 2L plus 2W. So what we're going to do is we're going to solve by substitution. In this equation, let's isolate W. So let's divide both sides by L. So 40 over L is equal to W. And in the second equation, let's replace W with 40 divided by L. So 26 is equal to 2L plus 2 times 40 over L. Now to get rid of the fraction, let's multiply every term by L. So at this point, I'm just going to get rid of this. So this is going to equal 26L, and that's equal to 2L squared. And over here, the L's will cancel, and we'll just have 2 times 40, which is 80. Now let's divide everything by 2. 26 divided by 2 is 13. 2 over 2 is 1, and 80 divided by 2 is 40. Now, let's take this term, move it to the right side. 
So this is going to be 0 is equal to L squared minus 13L plus 40. Now we need to factor the expression. What two numbers multiply to 40 but add to negative 13? 5 and 8 multiplies to 40, but we need to use negative 5 and negative 8 because those two numbers add up to negative 13. So to factor, it's going to be L minus 5 times L minus 8. So we have two potential answers. L could be 5 or L could be 8. Now the area has to be 40. So 40 is equal to L times W. 5 times 8 is 40. So if L is 5, W is 8. And when L is 8, W is 5. So regardless if you choose this answer or this answer, the length of the diagonal will still be the same. And AE will still be the same. So we could just choose one of those two answers. So we're going to say that L is 8 because it appears to be longer if you look at the shape of this figure. And W, which appears to be the shorter side, we're going to say it's 5. So D squared is L squared plus W squared. L is 8, W is 5, 8 squared is 64, and 5 times 5 is 25. 64 plus 25 is 89. So if we take the square root of both sides, the diagonal is the square root of 89. AE is 1 half of the diagonal. So AE is half of the square root of 89. So if you want to get a decimal value for that, this is going to be 4.717 approximately. And so this is the exact answer though for AE. It's half of the square root of 89.